sure do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Good morning. <laughs> yes, I do. And you, know, you have no idea. Dorothy and I are talking about technology. And he says, I've never set up the camera before. But yes, I have. No, she has. Just that he does it so well. So why would I tinker with that? <laughs> I'm like trying to set the camera up and Dorothy's like, Asking me about other stuff. I'm like, I need to set the camera up. <laughs> Drew can only do one thing at a time. I swear. Like, his brain has one channel. It's true. And he can't, like, diversify outside of that one channel. It's true. <laughs> In my brain, it's like, bing, 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 bing. It's true. And Dorothy yeah. knows that. And she still asks me to do stuff while I'm doing stuff. Because I try to convert him to the other side. <laughs> But it doesn't work. <laughs> Try to convert him to make him have a brain that can think about two things at the same time, but it's not going to work out. Trying to change my brain. <laughs> Just oh, accept my... me as I am. <laughs> oh, some days, Drew. <laughs> I'm setting up our Instagram live. Yeah, we have a few people viewing us right now, viewing us, tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> Viewing, viewing us. us. Thank you for viewing us. Thank you for viewing us. Anyway, if you're in here, let us know you're here and uh, give us a shout out. We'll give you a shout out if you give us a hello. <laughs> if you give us a shout out, we'll give you a shout out. Oh, man. Talk about brains and malfunctioning. <laughs> All right. So if you're checking us out live here on Facebook, we're also going live on Instagram. And we post every day on Instagram as well. Sometimes mm -hmm. our posts are a little bit different. So. You can check us out there. It's Louise. Hey, Louise. Good morning, Louise. Good morning. Let's go like this. Pow. I like that thing. You use that a lot. <laughs> he likes it. Good morning, Louise. Thanks for joining us. So today we're talking about detoxifying your pantry. Yes. So um, I have to, can I tell them the story? Sure. Okay. So yesterday I went, um, Shauna welcomed me into her home because she had some questions about her pantry essentials. So she says, Dorothy, would you come over and uh, go through my pantry and my fridge with me? And I was sure that sounds like fun. So I went, Shauna's one of our monthly members, uh, one of our awesome, amazing monthly members because um, we have so much going on in, in our monthly membership and our members are outstanding. Wow. Outstandingly fantastic. Dorothy's bringing her teacher words out. <laughs> anyway, so I went over to Shauna's house yesterday. And we went through her pantry and I thought, wow, like this is very good information that we should share with, with our audience. So that's what we want to do today is we want to um, show you, not show you guys, but explain to you guys what um, you can do to clean out your pantry or clean it up a little bit. Detoxify your pantry. <laughs> That's right. So, where would you like to get started? Well, I guess I wanted to get started with the our, our philosophy behind cleaning out the pantry because it might be something a little bit different than what you have seen before. You know, you see those TV shows where those weight loss TV shows where they go in with the big garbage bags and they just sweep everything out. And then you have these huge garbage bags full of food that just gets wasted or chucked out. And, um, I just don't think that's a sustainable way to, or we don't <laughs> believe that's a sustainable way to go about it because first of all, it's very wasteful. You know, you're throwing out all of that food that you paid for. It's not real. It's not real. It's for TV. It's for TV. <laughs> but then second of all, you're not really teaching your yourself how to go about removing those things from, from your diet or from your daily life. So everything that Drew and I do, we talk about progressively making slow changes and it's no different with the pantry we want you to add things to your pantry slowly instead of just wiping it clean and having nothing in there <laughs> so i guess that's that's a good place to start is to just kind of um get into the mindset that you're going to be adding things to the pantry as opposed to wiping it out 
That's right. So we had Kelly. Kelly came in here on Instagram. She's just, good morning, Kelly. Thanks good morning. for checking us out. We got Liam, my man, Liam. I've known Liam for years. He's a good friend of mine. We have lots of fantastic biking memories together. <laughs> so uh, thanks for checking us out here, Liam. And everyone that's tuning in, we're talking about detoxifying your pantry this morning. So I think it's challenging because many times we go to the pantry in the evening when it's mm. time when, when we're like snacking, for example, or when we're bored, we're watching something on Netflix more than TV these days. <laughs> and we go to the pantry and that's where the most unhealthy things are in our homes. So yes. that's why we want to get rid of them. So I would say the bathroom is the most toxic place in our household. And then, well, besides under the sink, I would say the pantry is the most detox or sorry, the most toxic place in our kitchen. Yeah. And I think by under the sink, Drew meant your cleaning supplies. <laughs> is that what you meant? Under the sink? Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. So wherever your cleaning supplies are would be a toxic place in the house as well. That's right. Yes. I want to tell you what we got going on here. This is kombucha. I already drank mine. And, and, I take it like a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and if you saw the last post I put up on, I think both, both Facebook and Instagram, I talked about the different ingredients we use for kombucha. And we have that every single morning. So as soon as you get up in the morning, you have some kombucha and it helps. Well, it helps your gut get ready for food. And I think a lot of times people are like, I can't, I'm not ready for breakfast. I don't like to eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. So if you start to implement kombucha in the morning, that will certainly help with that. It also increases digestion. So that's a big one. If you have any gas, bloating, and digestion, mm -hmm. you should definitely get on the kombucha train. Yes. <laughs> and one thing I want to mention about kombucha too is, it is so quick, easy, simple to make and very inexpensive when you're, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with buying kombucha, um, but it does get pricey, like for, it's, it, it can get expensive and you can make your own very cheaply <laughs> and it doesn't take a lot of time. Yeah. And if you're not going to make your own, we know a, com a local company called Sunshine Blends. Mm -hmm. They sell at the Old Uptown Market. And they're out of Innisfil, if you guys yeah. are here locally tuning in, they're a good company. But you can certainly make your own. We do it all the time, every mm -hmm. every week. And it's something that you can... We make it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, something that we teach you guys how to do. So if you go to trueformlife.com slash how to make kombucha, we have a whole video workshop on how to do that yourself. So yeah. that's what we have going on with that. And then we have morning tea as well. Mm-hmm. Drew, you don't have to explain our morning tea. <laughs> I don't really know. Drew's like the morning routine kind of guy. You know, he gets the kombucha ready, the tea ready, and I do the breakfast. <laughs> oh, green smoothies. smoothies. So Drew gets like the liquids prepared for the day. <laughs> I'm the breakfast lady. <laughs> you have to have morning routines. Everybody has to have morning routines. I talk about that all the time because... I think if we have morning routines, it sets our entire day up for success. So, Dar Darlene, Darlene just jumped in. Darlene popping in. Good morning, Darlene. Good morning, Darlene. So, we were just talking about detoxifying your pantry. I was just talking about our morning routine, and we start off with kombucha. Mm. Green smoothies is another one coming up after the tea. Tea is something we just sip on, for example. But in this tea concoction, we have gin We have ginger. Um, grated. Grated, fresh grated ginger. Show him my, let me grab my plate. Oh, Drew is in love with this plate. <laughs> oh my gosh. He uses this thing like multiple times a day. So this here, where, oh, it's way up there. So that plate there is like, you can, it's like, it's, what do you say, gradable? It's grated. Sure, Drew. <laughs> gradable. It's gradable. So I take the ginger and I scrape it on this thing and it turns it so fine. It like dissolves in the hot water. And then the ginger and the turmeric, I just scrape on this and I throw it in our, I don't know what to call it, diffuser thing? Diffuser, the tea thing that you pour? Teapot? Teapot? Kind of thing? I'm not sure where you got diffuser from, <laughs> but that's okay. So the teapot, we, and I throw a, a thing of reishi mushroom in there. I know what you mean by diffuser now. <laughs> he means this thing. No, I mean that thing. Oh, you do mean that thing. Okay, this thing. This. This right here. What do you call that? A teapot. A teapot? I just meant because of like that thing. Like, what is that? Oh, I'm dripping. Oh, dear. Like, what is the thing that squishes it down? I don't know, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's making the... What are you doing? I'm looking at it. 
So that's what help make, help makes the tea. So I throw that in there with black tea. So pu'er tea is a black tea, then a green tea. I really like the jasmine, not the jasmine, and also the green tea with the cincha. cincha with the roasted cincha. rice in them. A lot of times you go to a Chinese restaurant for food, and that's what you have in there. So that that's the combination that we have every morning, and uh, that. Did something. you tell them about the turmeric? Yeah, tum yeah, turmeric and ginger gets grounded into here. And turmeric. Then, <laughs> anyway, that's a different story. And that goes into the hot water, the teapot thing. And then we gotta throw a stick of reishi mushroom in there. Not a stick, but you know how they chop those up. Slice. A slice. Thank you. And then, is that it? Yeah. So I that's so. that's what's in the tea every morning. So get on that train. That'll that'll that's very medicinal for you. Get on <laughs> the tea train. <laughs> okay. So that, that's a bit of our morning routine. But when it comes to pantries, I think that when we'll, what Dorothy was saying is I feel like we have this mindset around lack, like lacking. We don't have mm -hmm. enough. Like I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. And it's kind of like can't for me, like the word can't. It's so limiting. So when we have, when we talk about the things that we don't have in our life, that's based, that's, that's based around lack instead of abundance. And we feel that if you flip that around and start adding things to your pantry, instead of taking them away, then you'll feel like there's more things in your life instead of less. Yeah, it reminds me of, of something I used to tell tell my students all the time when I was teaching because, you know, you'd come to a frustrating problem for, for some of them or a frustrating question or topic or whatever it was, reading, writing, math, and they say, I can't do it. And I would always respond with, yes, you can do it. You just may not have achieved it yet, but you will. You will achieve it if you keep working on it, keep keep staying strong and, and keep at it, you will achieve it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. We just had Garnet pop in here. Garnet's the owner of Tasty Thai here in Old. Hey, Garnet. And we love your restaurant, oh, Garnet. Oh, yes. Thanks for being so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love Thai food, and your restaurant is amazing, so thanks. Yes, we very much enjoy the red curry mm, and the coconut rice. And then we had... Um, they just have their mango? mangoes in now It's because it's mango season. So sticky mango rice. rice? Sticky oh mango my rice. gosh. It's like a party in your mouth. <laughs> 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 so you want to check that out if, if you're popping by. Yeah. <laughs> Mabel just popped in here. Hi, Mabel. Good morning, Mabel. Mabel's part of our 21-day CTP challenge oh, that we have going on. It's such a fantastic group. Yeah, yes. it's amazing. Our group is, we just did a live video for them last night. And it's, uh, our group is like, there's post smoothies going up every single minute, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And we love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for coming into our group, Mabel, and checking out us live here. Yeah. So we're talking about detoxifying your pantry this morning. Uh, if you guys have questions um, that you'd like us to talk about, by all means, uh, throw it up in the in the comment section and, and we'll be sure to address your questions as well. Um, good morning, hey, Amber. Amber. And then Ruby. Good morning, Ruby. Wow. Thanks for tuning in, guys. So where do we want to go next with the with the pantry talk? We talked about um, earlier, we talked about it's a process of adding things to the pantry as opposed to wiping it out. Um, where would you like to go to next? Well, what can we add? Why don't we start there? What's something that we can add to our pantry that's maybe a little bit easier for a beginner or just to get started for adding cleaner, healthier types of Okay, I have a few. I have a few ideas. Oh boy. <laughs> she couldn't wait to get into this. I have this. a few ideas. So, um, where I w a good place to start, I believe, is with our oils. So you know, a lot of times in the pantry we have, um, you know, those spray-on oils, or you know, those, or like some of the oils like that go rancid very quickly. Um, do you want to name a couple or? Like uh, that you might see, like a vegetable oil or a hydrogenated oil. Spray-ons? Yeah. yeah. Or, or those oils that we, we use in cooking. So that's one of the things I would say right away is um, an, um, one that you would want to address or one that you would want to change right away to, for example, a coconut oil. Or something that is a, is um, more beneficial to our health, such as a avocado oil, for example. So um, that's one right away that I would... Say first off, let's let's <laughs> look at those. Um, another one is sugar. So if you have like 
a big bag of white sugar in your in your pantry, I would suggest switching first to a raw sugar, and then maybe later on you can board like the honey train or the maple, maple syrup. syrup. Um, so, but the transition from white refined sugar transition to a, a raw sugar first, and then try out some some more liquid sweeteners. Uh, Nev, oh, you wants here. to interrupt me. We got Dallas that joined in here. Good morning, Dallas. Dallas found us on Instagram. If you guys are on Instagram, we're on Facebook Live right now. Facebook.com slash True Form Life. And then if you Facebookers are on Instagram as well, check us out. The profile is just Drew Taddy. We use that as a mm -hmm. business page. Mm -hmm. um, so good morning, Dallas. And good morning, Cindy. Cindy joined us as well on Instagram. Uh, I, I like this comment. Amber just said that. She said, I like what you said about throwing stuff away. A better way is to finish something you have. Yes. Before starting, before starting with other stuff, and that's what we're about. That's exactly like, how we teach. Yeah, and it's it's important. Like we know, we understand that we spend money on groceries, and sometimes we're not sure what to buy or if it's healthy or clean. Mm -hmm. So we never say throw it out or never use it. I'm like use what you have, and we don't think it's sustainable or even realistic. Like that stuff that we mentioned earlier, where they that you've seen on TV where they just wipe out the whole pantry oh, yeah. or the whole fridge. Like that's not real. No. They, they do that for TV purposes mm -hmm. and because it's shocking and because it's abrupt, it's, um, <gasps> the wow factor. yeah, it's not like no one does that in real life. <laughs> Dorothy, we mentioned earlier, Dorothy went to Shauna's house and did some helping her organize and looking mm -hmm. through her pantry as well. And that you, you guys didn't just dump everything in the garbage, garbage no. bag, did you? <laughs> no, there was a few things. So, um, Shauna expressed that she wanted me to be very honest, very truthful, and if there was something in the pantry that was an absolute no, then she wanted to get rid of it. But she wasn't just going to chuck it in the garbage. She was actually donating what she wasn't going to be using, which I think is a good option as well. So maybe you can donate it or give it to somebody, like a friend or a family you know might use it. Um, as well. So there was some items that, not very many, but there was a couple items where I was like, no, like don't, don't even finish that, right? <laughs> Donate that right away. So, but th most of the items were, okay, finish that up. And then next time, look for a cleaner option. Yeah, that's a good point. We had a question here coming in on Instagram and the Instagram question was about oils mm. you know, are you using avocado oil for heating purposes or is that to keep cool afterwards so for example like sesame oil mm. we would put that on a stir fry after, after. it's cooked mm -hmm. or even a salad if you have if you have some sesame seeds you want to sprinkle on there and you have a nice salad did I say salad yeah you said salad, salad and, and you <laughs> want to put it on after that's 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 fantastic mm. we would use coconut oil to cook on high temperatures mm. So if you're going to throw something in, if you're going to bake something in the oven, like roasted vegetables, for mm. example, or if you're going to cook stir, a stir fry on high, we would suggest coconut oil, for example. We wouldn't suggest uh, olive oil. Um, Not for cooking. But uh, avocado oil is kind of one in between. We would put that on afterwards, and I wouldn't use olive oil to cook on high temperatures. I think its smoke point is higher. But I still... I think you're getting confused between avocado and olive oil. What did I say? You are interchanging them. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, um, olive oil is one we don't want to cook with. We want to use it on salads. And then avocado oil, you were saying you can cook on low. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, you can You, you can cook. The, I think the smoke, what I say, the smoke point. So, some oils, like vegetable oils, go rancid at high levels. Mm -hmm. and, and extra, So... We don't really recommend vegetable oil very often. So you want to look at coconut oil as a high smoke point mm -hmm. so it doesn't go rancid on high temperatures. Mm -hmm. So that's why you would bake with it or you throw it in smoothies. Or it's not smoothies. Ah! You throw it in, in uh, stir, fry, stir fries, for example. That's coconut oil. And avocado oil is kind of in between. So cook on low if you're going to use avocado oil mm -hmm. to heat or just use it on a salad, for example. Yeah. So thanks for the question. Hopefully that answered your question. In a roundabout way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I but, interrupted you. Yes. I don't remember where I was with the pantry talk. <laughs> but basically what Sean and I did is we went shelf per shelf and we just looked at what she had. But 
Um, and, you know, we always turned to the ingredient list. That's where we always turn to to see if this was something we wanted to um, keep consuming, change, or get rid of. So that was kind of our three categories, like a keep, finish, and then change later, or get rid of right away was kind of our three categories. Um, so, that's so, some, so that's something that they could use. Yes. So if you're looking to get rid of things in your pantry, set up those categories or make a list of the things that, what what is it, keep? We had um, definitely keep, like this is a good health product. We had a middle category where, where it was like, mm, not the best, There's a but I'm going to finish it and then replace that was the majority of, of the of the categories. And then the last category was like, ooh, no way. Get rid of right away. An example of a ooh, no way was um, uh, vegetable oil was one of the ooh, no ways, like the spray on. And um, there was um, a, a box of crackers in there with a list of ingredients like this long. I was like, <laughs> no. And that's one of our, that was one of our guidelines with ingredient lists. If you pick up a box or a can of something of, of food and there is a list of ingredients, like don't even bother, <laughs> like leave it on the shelf, <laughs> right? Um, our rule is kind of five or six ingredients. And then if there is anything beyond that, then, then well, we leave it. <laughs> if you can't read or pronounce all the ingredients on the box, you should not be consuming. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't go in your body. Usually... Yes. Like 98% of the time, it's a chemical of some kind. Mm -hmm. So that's why, especially when you're at a conventional, I know when we go to like a health food store, they have all kinds of different like long words for all kinds of crazy different health types of ingredients. But we're talking about the majority here. So when you're in a grocery store and you're looking at a box of crackers, crackers are probably the worst or one of the worst. Crackers and, and cereals. <laughs> and so when you look at the ingredients and you can't read or pronounce, your body's not going to understand that either. Mm -hmm. So we don't put that in our carts and we don't put it in our body. So push that to the side. Mm -hmm. I wanted to mention cornstarch is one of them. We're not a big fan of those lower quality types of corn products that they stuff into many different mm -hmm. products as well. Like crackers, like cereals, like those boxed packaged foods. Yeah. And then refined sugar is an easy one. Uh, many times for baking purposes, we have big, big boxes or containers where they sell the big bags of sugar because mm -hmm. they're so cheap. Yeah. And they're, when they're that cheap, that usually means they're low quality and they're cheap for our bodies as well. So yeah. push those to the side and start to start to put better quality. And, and like we said earlier, don't you don't need to grab that big bag of sugar and dump it in the garbage. No. Get yourself a smaller bag of better quality sugar, like a, like a raw sugar, for example. And then slowly use that sugar and then never buy it again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I, I was talking earlier about reading ingredient, the ingredient labels. And a good um, one thing I, I wanted to share about the, the list of ingredients is always, always read your list of ingredients as opposed to reading the nutrition label. So always read your list of ingredients. And something interesting about the ingredients the ingredient label is um, they list the ingredients in the order from most to least. So if you see sugar, for example, in the second ingredient, for example, one of the cereals we were looking at at, Ch at Chana's place, it had oats as the first ingredient and the second ingredient was sugar. <laughs> so that means that oats had in that box what the most of the ingredients was oats. And the second ingredient, the, the second most ingredient was sugar. <laughs> right. So just pay attention to that as well. Um, the, what is your first, your top five ingredients, right? Well, the top, the top three top three would be the most important. So if sugar's in the top three, you want to put it back on the shelf. Sugar, soy lithocin is another low quality one that they mm -hmm. put in as like a preservative or a filler. And then corn is in there corn. often as well. So. I would say if those are in the top three, mm -hmm. they're not going to be a quality product. Usually if those are in there at all, it's not a quality product. So. Yeah. Another one that Sean and I saw come up often on canned goods was citric acid and ascorbic acid. And they put those in canned veggies, um, tomatoes, and even salsa, for example, and um, other canned products because it helps keep the keep the color. Yeah. So those are those are chemicals that they put in to help make the food 
look better. <laughs> um, so th that is one where I said, uh, where I would say, you know what, finish up your can of tomatoes or, or your can or your jar of salsa. But next time, look for one that doesn't have those preservatives. Bye, Cindy. <laughs> See you, Cindy. Cindy's on Instagram. I think she's going to school. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that's, a, that's an important one as well to understand that those top three ingredients and what we're looking for in products. Mm -hmm. So I see there's a, there's a number of you guys online here. So we're here every Friday. So come check us out here. We're not going to leave you guys just yet, but if you have any questions or comments, we love your comments. So I'll drag them on the screen. If, if we see there's a handful of you still here checking us out. So, mm -hmm. and again, we're here every Friday morning. So we're going to give you different topics throughout the week that, that from questions we come in or hot topics <laughs> that are that are coming in throughout the week as well. Yeah, if you have a topic you would like us to, to address or talk about, let us know. We love suggestions. Yeah, we do have our, our Complete Truth Protein. It's a CTP 21-day group going on right now. It's going fantastically. There's so many uh, smoothies coming in. There's actually even baking. Mm -hmm. We just started a meal plan for that group as well. That group is exclusively for those that purchase CTP. So if you have, you've only missed, if you if you, if you purchased or if you want to purchase and you want to get into the group, let us know because we do deliver here locally and we do ship online. And we also have a couple businesses around here that you can find the product as well at the CLC Fitness Center and as well as the Old Uptown Market. So we can set you up with that. If you want to get a boost of energy in your smoothies. I'm going to get it. Where are you going? I, She's out. out of here. See ya. <laughs> if you guys want a boost of energy in your day, we highly recommend using a product like Complete Tooth Protein. This is perfect for smoothies. So this has quinoa, hemp hearts, maca, and stevia. Very nice combination of superfoods to nutritionize your day. So this is perfect for smoothies. And then if you want to have better quality flours and baking, for example, we have the original kind. This is just quinoa and hemp seeds. And uh, it's just a great way to add nutrients to your body. And I think many times, so for example, we have a lot of times we have digestive issues. So gas, bloating, and digestion. That's usually, come back in the screen for the Instagram people. Oh, me. <laughs> I thought you meant the bag. So if we have the sun coming up. So I know. I was wondering why you have this like fresh glow. <laughs> and I'm like, not so glowy. <laughs> You gotta switch spots. I'm like, what is going on here? I want to glow this too. This nice morning glow, and I'm like, great. <laughs> <laughs> the sun's just coming up in our window, so that's why the. Uh, that's why he has an angelic glow. That's that's there all the time. <laughs> all the time. I can't oh, help no, it. No, 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 no. Follows don't, me don't around. Don't believe that. I try to get away from it. But... <laughs> so I was just gonna mention that we do. Um, we have these products around here locally, if you want. So let's say, for example, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Pull it together. <laughs> okay. I'll try. <laughs> Sometimes, so if we have white flour, for example, white flour is another good one that we can get rid of or transition out of our kitchen. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different types of flour. But like, what's all-purpose flour, for example? I believe that's just like a refined white flour. Yeah. And then like... Um, you know what you want to... Let me... Sorry to cut you off. You know what you want to look at for is enriched. Like when you have enriched flours, they take the natural types of... Oh, the sun's really coming out now. <laughs> I'm going to need a hat in a second. When they when it's enriched, they take away the nutrients from a product. I, want, I wanted some glow. You want some of that? <laughs> Mabel said you guys are a blast. Aw, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Mabel. Mabel. <laughs> I try to take things seriously, but Dorothy won't let me. <laughs> oh, oh um, boy. Look how bright that is. Do you want me to lower it? It's almost like it's coming up that way or this way. Because it's bright here and it's dark here. Yes. <laughs> I'll lower. Tell them about Enrich. Well, I wasn't really sure what you were, where you were going with that. No, <laughs> That's right. why I was like, hmm, what's he going to say about this? But I've got another one. Oh, why well, don't you finish, finish <laughs> Enrich? <laughs> and then I'll talk about mine. Enrich. Just pay attention to Enrich. Like if you take away, like when you take away the good quality nutrients, then they put other stuff in there. They're and like, they enrich it. Yeah. And then the other stuff. <laughs> They're like, let's put more stuff in there to make it better. Let They're me like, take away your fiber and <laughs> enrich it with some refined sugar. 
<laughs> Doesn't this sound ridiculous? Yeah, but that's what they do. So pay attention to enriched flowers because that's not what you want in your life. Yes. Um, we have the, you know, when you, you used to bake, like our grandparents used to bake. And some of you watching may, may bake as well. Bake. And I'm talking, when I say bake, I'm talking about breads, like fresh breads. And mm. you, we know when our grandparents used to make fresh breads and they, the smell would like wake up the whole house or the whole neighborhood and you would love that smell. And I'm, like, I think we, I have memories. Mm -hmm. Do you have memories? Oh yes, of course. My and, grandma was always pounding the bread. Yeah. <laughs> and like, we don't That's make me time. That's the bread. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. We don't make time <laughs> for that stuff anymore. But that's when we really had those good quality types of breads. Now breads are usually low quality, but if you have a local baker in the area, we have the Black Forest German mm. Bakery, for example. Yeah. Like they would have better quality types of breads or products to offer the community. And you would probably have some in your community as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So stay away from those long lists like breads. They were like, oh, what kind of breads? And they would have like this long of list of breads. Uh, ingredients. Like, you're sorry. About. Yeah. Ingredients. Yeah. So bread, yeah, bread's a tough one. The one I was going to talk about is, um, now I lost it, um, natural, what do they call it? I have no Na idea. Natural. <laughs> natural what? Um, natural flavor. That's, there oh, it is. Boy. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> Reeling it out. So it just like, they put natural flavor on stuff, which kind of tricks us into believing, oh, natural, it's good for us, right? But really natural flavor has this umbrella term for like a ton of different things. So when they put natural flavor on something, you have no idea what it is. It could, and it most, it's true. I know. He's giggling here, but it, it, it's most likely um, something we don't want to be consuming. But they just put a little umbrella on it that says natural, and we're like, oh, good. That's good for me because it says natural. Oh, tricking like, us. Yeah, it's <laughs> nonsense. You know what? Like natural <laughs> flavors usually means MSG. Mm -hmm. And it's so frustrating Very. to be on our side and understand how it works, like how the whole industry works. And like the industry work, works in large part around deception. Mm. And they're like trying to trick you. It's a it's like, brain game. Like the whole grocery industry for the most part is trying to like trick you into like trying to get you to um, – purchased food mm -hmm. that's all it is like they're trying to make money they, they they usually have if their products go bad or they expire or they're not selling then they lose money so they try to push different products in different ways and that like natural flavors is one of them especially because a lot of people are trying to move towards healthier lifestyles mm -hmm. so those natural flavors like msg for example there's something crazy like 35 names for msg i'm guessing like 35 different names for msg mm -hmm. and msg is a it's a toxic substance that goes into our body and our body doesn't know how to process and it causes a lot of issues so and you know you know like one of the ways you could tell that or that i can tell personally that there's msg in something that i eat like particularly when we're eating out at a restaurant is you go to the bathroom like right after you eat cramps bloating and then it just it's like your body's way of rejecting yeah. right like what are you doing to me i gotta get this out it's a good right? way it's a good way to put it like yeah. it's, your, it's a toxin that your body rejects and it's like gotta get out as gotta soon as possible that out. Yeah. <laughs> so if that happens to you um with with you know uh, like when you eat something and then you have those side effects then take a look at what you're eating because most likely there is something in that food that your body cannot like a toxin in your food that that your body just cannot recognize or utilize so it needs it's like a warning sign got to get that out <laughs> and don't get that confused with proper digestion right and proper movements proper movements so we actually get this question or comment often when we start to put people on meal plans that aren't used to a meal plan so we teach a excuse me we teach a highly plant-based diet. Fibrous. Fibrous <laughs> diet. So when you're put, putting these green leafy products into your body, and there's, they're, they're high in fiber, but we need that. Like our, we need fiber to help our body digest our food. We need, that, we need it to help it flush out toxins. So when we have a high fibrous diet, we have proper bowel movements, which is what we should have. You mm -hmm. should have a movement every day. Yes. And like every morning is a good way to start your day. Yes. But it shouldn't be like, 
this might be going a little too far, but <laughs> but you you'll know the difference because it won't be painful, right? You won't have those cramps, those bloating. Right. It'll be a relief, like ah. Yeah, and it's not, <laughs> I think I think when you have like when you eat out sometimes and you like you be like oh, I probably shouldn't eat that, and we do it too. Oh yeah, and you you you're like oh boy, <laughs> here it comes <laughs> this. this this is coming out. Get out of the way. So that's not what we're talking about when we say you have a proper movement. We mean like, you know, it's coming and it should come regular like every morning, for example. Maybe it comes in the evening, whenever that is for you. But in, I say in the morning because you wake up and you're, you're more relaxed like your gut and your like intestines are more relaxed and it's a more natural movement in the morning. And that's like, kind of like you have your movement and you get on with the day. Mm-hmm. But... Um, there's, there's different purposes, I think, or different reasons what we're getting at. But when you move to a cleaner type of diet and you start to eat those better, those cleaner foods, you should have proper movements on a regular basis. It shouldn't, but it shouldn't be like, yeah, you have a million, like, oh my gosh, head to the bathroom. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Out I, of the way. I used to, like, before I would, I knew, uh, and about, you know, uh, about, before I started eating a whole food diet, I guess I should say, um, years ago before I started the journey. And I was having all of this digestion issues when I ate because I just didn't know. I would actually plan like where the bathrooms are. You know what I mean? And if there wasn't a bathroom close by, I wouldn't eat. Really? I wouldn't eat because I I had no idea how my body was going to react. And I didn't want to be in a situation where I couldn't go to the bathroom. Right? (laughs) Like right after you eat? Yeah. So if there wasn't a bathroom nearby or if I wasn't in my own home and, and, or somewhere where, you know, you are comfortable going to the bathroom, I wouldn't eat because I, I didn't want, I didn't want that to happen. <laughs> Tell us about your favorite bowel movement story <laughs> in the comments below. Oh dear. That got a out of hand. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, it's funny. Oh, but I man. think like we can talk about these kind of things and we should. And, and like sometimes like when we talk, talk to younger athletes or younger generations, we talk about hydration and like yes. the color of your pee, for example. <laughs> and they're like, you get these little giggles or they like <gasps> hold their breath and they're like looking at their friends. Like if they breathe, they're going to start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it's any different when you're adults because who talks about that stuff? Right. No one talks about it. I don't even know if doctors even talk about it. Like, I don't know. You having a proper movement? <laughs> <laughs> you certainly don't go and have tea. <laughs> and you're like, how was your movement? <laughs> oh, dear gosh, Drew. Enough. Okay. I think it's done now. <laughs> okay. I just think that we should, as adults, we should be able to talk about these things. Okay. And laugh. I think we did talk and about it now. Time. It's over. <laughs> Dorothy wants to move on. Yes. You're the one who told, started talking about your own movement stories. <laughs> yes, I did. Experiences. But I feel like sharing my stories can help others, right? Because maybe that somebody is in that situation now, right? Yeah. So sharing my stories could possibly help others. So that's why I'm sharing. Thank you for sharing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So with the whole detoxifying your pantry thing, we went over adding. So adding things to your pantry instead of taking out, we think it's important to add. And then when, you're, when you've used your other products or when you start to realize that these are cleaner products and understand that they're better for our body than those naturally go away. Mm-hmm. I kind of feel like when you add things, and I, I went through this myself, I think we all mm-hmm. have or all will. When you're adding things, you want to have cleaner things in your pantry. Yeah. And it's the same thing with your bathroom. When you get a cleaner product, it does, when you have a nice clean product, it feels better. It does. It's like mentally feels better. You're like, ooh, that looks better in my bathroom. Yeah. So then you want to go and add something else that's cleaner and makes your body feel better. Yes. And it's the same thing with your pantry. When you go and put things in your pantry and you have like all these nice products lined up, and then you have something that you're like, no, it shouldn't be in there, like a big bag of white sugar or white flour, for example. And you're like, those don't match. So then you slowly want to transition and continue to add cleaner things to your pantry. Yeah. We also talked about the, the three categories to, to put your pantry items in. The definitely keep. This is a health product. And then we talked about the, ah, it's not the best, but I'm going to finish it, then look for a new, a, a cleaner version. And then the third category was definitely no get rid of so that would be like we talked about those definitely no get rid of would be the products that have like a long list of ingredients those would be those ones yeah dallas said sharing is caring yes it is dallas (laughs) (laughs) and 
Um, oh yeah. So I just wanted to mention that you don't have to have like the things in our pantry. Usually we carry, we have like, the, we talked about sugar, we talked about flour, but we also have like chips, for example, mm -hmm. we have, what else? Crackers, for example, where the, we, they're usually those unhealthy things. Now I'm a chip fan and I've talked about this in the past and I'm not, I'm not, um, afraid to share that, <laughs> but I, we look to cleaner ingredients, like cleaner, cleaner chips, for example, and that's okay. Like you can have cleaner chips. Like we have a beet chips, for example, yes. that my mom actually introduced mm -hmm. us to. So thanks mom. But it, they're little chips and they're just beets, mm -hmm. right? That's all there. That's they're, the only ingredient. There's only one ingredient. And we've actually <laughs> dehydrated our own garden beets before too for, yeah. for chips. We've yeah. tried that as well. Yeah. And you can make your own crackers, for example. Yes. But what I'm trying to say is that you don't have to not have anything that's fun or mm. enjoyable. But what we're getting at is here, try to have cleaner types of substances. So you can have a bag of chips in there. I've found chips with three ingredients. Yes. That are like sea salt and potatoes. Potatoes, and... sea salt, and avocado oil. Oh, yeah. That's one that of my favorites. That was fav one of Drew's favorites. He's a huge chip fan, but it doesn't mean that he eats chips every night either. It's like... I could maybe once or twice a month kind of thing, like as a treat, you know, yeah. when the game's on or something like that. Yeah, so, and that's okay. Yeah. We don't want you to think you can never have... Never have chips again. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not really... I wouldn't say it's realistic, or that, that's something that I look forward to, like maybe a little bit of flavor, and it's crunchy. I like crunchy things, for example. Yes. So oh, yes. don't feel like... <laughs> Don't feel like you can't ever have anything like that in your pantry again. Just look for cleaner types of products mm -hmm. that, that are better for your health, really. One of my favorites right now is apple chips. <laughs> so all it is is just um, dehydrated apples. That's it. And for sure, you could make your own as well. Um, but um, you can also purchase. But just be careful because some with the apple chips and, and things, because like anything, they do, they do have some brands where there's sugar and a bunch of other ingredients in it, but just make sure it's just apples in there. Mm -hmm. Dallas said, um, sorry, what did you say, Dallas? Oh, sweet potatoes. Mm. We got Larry. What's up, Larry? Hey, Larry. And Larry's a, a good friend from California, Orange County. What's Woo! up? <laughs> <laughs> I went to school. I played ball with Larry years ago. So thanks for tuning in, Larry. Hope things are going well. We're looking forward to seeing you guys this Soon summer. Soon this summer. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so look for just when you're reading ingredients, that's why we went over ingredients earlier. So when you're looking for these types of products, just read ingredients and pay attention and try to find cleaner types of ingredients mm -hmm. to more nutritionize your yep. body. And of, always, 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 always read the ingredients. Like even myself, I fall into the trap sometimes of, oh, it's, it's, it's coconut water, for example. And I just grab and go because it's coconut water. But we found out before that there are some that have sugar in them, for example. I opened and I cracked open a can one time and I'm all excited for my refreshing coconut water. I took a sip, I'm like, Blah! and I'm like, something is not right. And I looked at the ingredients and there's sugar in it. And it just made me mad. <laughs> so always, 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 always read ingredients. Yeah. It's kind of frustrating sometimes. It is very frustrating. Because you find like a coconut water and you're like, oh, this is just the coconut water. And it, but I think actually, actually, I think Coca Cola bought a one in particular. They bought a co uh, coconut water company because they know it's a growing trend and yeah. they want to get ahead of the times. They're like, oh, let's buy this company. Let's, let's buy this company, and they put sugar in it because it's Coca Cola. I mean, <laughs> so you were, we were drinking. The, I was drinking it, and I was like, "There's no way this is natural." And of course, we looked at the ingredients, and that sugar was the first thing and, in there. That, and I always be like, <laughs> "Man, they got me again." <laughs> them <laughs> Larry said hey guys great to see you great to see you too Larry um I and then I wanted to pull up pull over Allie's comment here Allie just got some CTP protein from us so she said good morning good morning Allie got the protein powder yes you did and you had a smoothie was amazing mm -hmm. and then we were going to have make protein balls oh today. delicious awesome send some send some pictures share some pictures with us Allie of your protein balls. Anything else with the pantry there? I think we covered it. Yeah. Just, um, I think we should, one of these days we'll show you our pantry. We'll show you what it looks like. We have like, we have coconut water in there, for example. We almond have milk. almond milk in there, for example. We do have some cleaner chips. We have beet chips in there for sure. That Apple I can chips. <laughs> Apple chips in there. And uh, I think baking, for some reason, I think baking is a, a challenging one. It's a hard transition because you're so used to baking a certain way 
and like Drew talked about earlier, your your grandma baked a certain way, you know, and then your your your, your mom, and you know what I mean. And it feels like tradition. Also, there's a lot of fear around with, with baking. There's a lot of fear about messing it up, right? What if it doesn't turn out? <laughs> so I think that's difficult to overcome too. Um, but changing the ingredients, it might mean it doesn't it doesn't work out but it, it is definitely a process and we always suggest making again like everything we do making those small changes as you go yeah for sure mm -hmm. making small sustainable changes that was tammy tammy i think you asked that question earlier so i don't have the phone right up to my face but tammy i just did an interview with tammy she's from body logos and she's from new york actually and tammy has a very cool story she was uh um, a, a dancer, like a Broadway dancer. Very cool. Very cool. And uh, Tammy's also a Taoist minister. So we talked about herbalism. We talked about, maybe we didn't touch on meditation too much, but uh, it was a great interview, Tammy. Thank you so much for coming on. We're going to be sharing that very soon. So um, Tammy talked about how uh, just a different mindset around um, being active. And, and I suppose instead of like pounding your body with like, with like challenging and difficult exercise, there's a different way to uh, move your body, change your body, and adapt your body into a more natural, mm. healthy way. So Exploring Mind and Body is nationally syndicated all across Canada. We air that on 96.5 here locally, and then it's a podcast. So if you can head over to iTunes and check out Exploring Mind and Body, we're on Stitcher and a number of other ones. So Tammy's one of our guess that just came on so we have to produce that publish it and then we put it out I'm to everyone. looking forward to that one yeah it's a good one yeah. really enjoy that one yeah what did Allie say Allie says do you use a dehydrator for the apple chips um we do have a dehydrator yes that and we have made apple chips but sometimes we also purchase them there's um a company at our old uptown market that makes apple chips and it's just apples those ones are delicious yeah um we also have a friend sometimes that gives us de homemade dehydrated apples yeah. so we're pretty fortunate that way <laughs> yeah we get we get spoiled we get spoiled <laughs> I, i've tried to make dehydrated burgers sometimes we have this we have a really big hydrator like a really nice one we, fancy one yeah we dehydrate herbs for example so uh, parsley something that we've dehydrated but dehydrate mint just about every year so we have mint that we put, put in our green smoothies like dried mint from the garden it's fresh from our garden yeah. so we dehydrate Same as kale kale we get so many greens in the summertime from our garden so that we then we dehydrate them and blend them into powder so that we have greens for our smoothies all year long yeah. <laughs> beet leaves is one of them oh, as yes. well yeah there's a lot of things that we dehydrate i try to de dehydrate burgers every once in a while Sometimes they turn out well, but most of the time they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've been too successful at that. But lentils, sweet potatoes. Yeah, already yeah. So, yeah, so you you can dehydrate for sure. There's a lot of things that you can dehydrate. Um, crackers is one, mm. but it, it it's it does take a while. Like it, it takes a while to mm. put together, and it takes a while to dehydrate. Mm. But sometimes it's really worth it. Yeah, we were on a. Um, a couple years ago, we were on a raw food kick, yeah. and and we did a lot of experimenting in the dehydrator. <laughs> but it does; it takes a lot of prep and a lot of time as well. So yeah, yeah. So we are back here we're, next Friday. Yeah, next Friday. Every Friday, we're going to be coming here live for you guys, with you guys. So if you have any questions throughout the week, let us know. Or if you have any topics you want us to talk about, and what else, Dorothy? Dad, I'm just reading Ali's comments. Said all good things take a while. Yes. Rome wasn't built in an overnight. Is in a day. Did? In a day. Yeah. <laughs> Rome wasn't built overnight. Where do you get this stuff from? <laughs> we do. We do have our CTP group. So uh, Ali just bought protein there. If you guys want to be involved in our challenge here, we still have over two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah. And our group is going crazy. I feel like it's popcorn. Our group is popping. Pop, 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 right, we get we get smoothie new smoothies. New smoothie recipes, new smoothie pictures every single day if you want to be involved in that. Or if you want to purchase CTP, we do sell them here locally and we do ship across the country. Wherever you're at, we can ship to your mm -hmm. door. To your destination. So yeah. Any little boost for your smoothies is definitely going to help. But we recommend the green bag. It only has four ingredients. So earlier we talked about reading ingredients and paying attention to what you're putting in your body. It only has four ingredients. And we always say... 
if you can't read it or pronounce it, you shouldn't be putting it in our right. body. So quinoa, natca, stevia, and hemp, hemp seeds. seeds. Yep. And then, so this one's for smoothies. And then this one here is for baking. So you would use this to replace your, your flour and baking. Um, lots of times um, transitioning. You can you can do it one for one in baking. So if your muffin recipe called for two cups of flour, you could use two cups of complete truth protein. But a lot of times a nice segue or transition is to ha do half and half. So if it's two cups of flour, do one cup of CTP and then a, a cup of your flour. That's a nice way to transition. And that's going to improve the, your baking. Like it's going to improve the health. like The, the nutrients. What, thank you. Of what you're putting in your body. So just pay attention to what you're putting in your body. And especially when it comes to kids. Mm. And these, you know, what's great about these recipes that Dorothy puts together is they're all kid friendly. Mm. And we always get comments on my toddler approved or yes. my kid really enjoyed this one. So if you have younger kids, the best thing that you can do for them is to start to implement cleaner types of products like CTP early on in their in their lives so it's not so sugary or it's not so processed because when they get older and you implement something that's cleaner they're going to be like where's the refined sugar yeah so the it's sooner the part yeah the sooner you can get get good quality products in into them the better mm -hmm. definitely mabel said i'm getting mine this morning awesome mabel do you oh you uh tell us what you have going on mabel if that's for smoothies or for baking uh, i know you ordered some so hopefully that comes in soon we most of the times when we ship, it comes in a day or two. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty quick. So that can definitely come to your doorstep right away. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys so much for coming in. It's Friday. 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 So happy Friday is here. And the weekend is tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to sleep all day tomorrow. It's been a long week for us. Probably a long week for you too. Yes. So we'll see you guys here on so those that are watching on Instagram, we're on Facebook, facebook.com slash trueformlife. And those of you that are watching on Facebook, we're also on Instagram as well. We post there every day as well. Those of you that are in our monthly membership, of course, we're going we to see, see you every day. Every day. <laughs> One of our favorite things to do is wake up to you guys and you see all our po the positive comments and quotes and exercises. Those of you that are in our CTP group. We'll be seeing you today too. Yeah, we, are. <laughs> we sent out a meal plan for you guys today that uh, we're going to start implementing. We're talking about our four tiers. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we're super excited to keep working with you guys and keep seeing your results and everything that's to come. So Mabel said, have a great weekend. Thanks, Mabel. You have a great weekend as well. Alec Paz, thanks for tuning in. Let yes, us know. thank you, Alec. Let us know how those protein balls go. Yes. All right, guys, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you online. Thank you so much for your support on our True Form page, your comments, your likes. Everything really helps us, inspires us, and, and continues to bring us content for you guys. And we'll be back at it next Friday morning. Absolutely. So you can Friday tune morning. in again next Friday morning if we don't get you online first. <laughs> All right, guys. See you. Have a great day. Bye.